Hi, everyone, and welcome to the first lesson of the Generative AI for Beginners course. Uh, this course is based on an open source curriculum with the same name available on GitHub that you can find at the link on the screen. I'm Carlotta Castelluccio. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft focused on artificial intelligence technologies. And in this video, I'm going to introduce you to generative AI and large language models. Large language models represent the pinnacle of AI technology, pushing the boundaries of what was once thought impossible. They've conquered numerous challenges that older language models struggled with, achieving human level performance in various tasks. They have similar capabilities and applications, but for the sake of this course, we'll explore how large, large language models are revolutionizing education through a fictional startup that we'll be referring to as our startup. Our startup works in the education domain with the, ambitious, yeah, with the ambitious mission of improving accessibility in learning on a global scale, ensuring equitable access to education and providing personalized learning experiences to every learner according to their needs. In this course, we'll delve into how our startup harnesses the power of generative AI to unlock new possibilities in education. We'll also examine how they address the inevitable challenges tied to the social impact of this technology and its technological limitations. But let's start by defining some basic concepts we'll be using throughout the course. Despite the uh, relatively recent hype surrounding generative AI, we can say that in the last couple of years, we have really uh, heard of generative AI everywhere and every time. Um, but this technology has been decades in the making, with its origins tracing back to the 1950s, 1960s. Uh, the earliest AI prototypes consisted of typewritten chatbots relying on knowledge bases maintained by experts. Uh, these chatbots generated responses based on keywords found in user input, but it soon became clear that this approach had scalability limitations. A significant turning point arrived in the 1990s when a statistical approach was applied to text analysis. And this gave birth to machine learning algorithms, uh, which could learn patterns from data without explicit programming. And these algorithms allowed machines to simulate human language understanding, having the way for the AI we know today. In more recent times, advancements in hardware technology allowed for development of advanced machine learning algorithms, particularly neural networks. These innovations significantly improved natural language processing, enabling machines to understand the context of words in sentences. This breakthrough technology powered the birth of virtual assistants in the early 21st century. These virtual assistants excelled at interpreting human language, identifying needs, and taking actions to fulfill them, such as answering queries with predefined scripts or connecting to third-party services. And so we arrived at generative AI, a subset of deep learning. After decades of AI research, a new model architecture known as the transformer um, emerged and transformers could handle longer text sequences as input and were based on the attention mechanism, enabling them to focus on the most relevant information, regardless of its order in the input text. Today, most generative AI models, often referred to as large language models, are built upon the transformer architecture. And that's uh, what the T in GPT uh, actually means. Um, these models trained on vast amounts of data from sources like books, articles, and websites possess a unique adaptability. They can tackle a wide range of tasks and generate grammatically correct text with a hint of creativity. But let's dive deeper into the mechanism of large language models and shed light on the inner workings of models like the OpenAI GPTs. One of the key concepts to grasp is tokenization. Large language models receive text as input and produce text as output, if we want to really simplify the mechanism. 
However, these models work much more efficiently with numbers rather than with uh, raw text sequences. And that's where the tokenizer comes into play. Text prompts are chunked into tokens, uh, helping the model in predicting the next token for completion. Uh, models also have a maximum, a maximum length of token window, and model pricing is also typically computed by the number of tokens used in outputs and inputs. So um, tokenization is really an important concept in large language models and generative AI domain. Now, a token is essentially a chunk of text, which can vary in length uh, and typically consists of a sequence of characters. And the tokenizer primary job is to really, is to really break down the input text into an array of those tokens, um, which are then further mapped to token indices. These token indices are essentially integer encoding of the original text chunks, making it easier for the model to process and understand. Now, let's move to predicting the output tokens. Um, given an input sequence of n tokens with the maximum n varying from one model to another according to the maximum um, content window length of, for, for one model, uh, the model is designed to predict a single token as its output. But here's where it gets interesting. The predicted token is then incorporated into the input of the next iteration, creating an expanding window pattern. And this pattern allows the model to provide more coher coherent and contextually relevant responses, often extending to one or multiple sentences. Now, let's delve into the selection process. The model chooses the output token based on its probability of occurring after the current text sequence. This probability distribution is calculated using the model's training data. However, here's the twist. The model doesn't always choose the token with the highest probability from the distribution. To simulate the process of creative thinking, a degree of randomness is introduced into the selection process. This means that the model doesn't produce the exact same output for the same input every time. That's the element that allows generative AI to generate text that feels you know, creative and engaging. Now, we say that the main capability of a large language model is generating a text from scratch, starting from a textual input written in natural language. But what kind of textual input and output? First of all, let me say that the input of a large language model is known as prompt, while the output is known as completion, a um, term that refers to the model mechanism of generating the next token to complete the current input. Let's do some examples of prompts and completion by using the OpenAI ChatGPT Playground, um, always in our educational scenario. Now, a prompt may include an instruction specifying the type of output we expect from the model. In the example we are seeing, we are asking to write an assignment for, a high, for high school students, including four open-ended questions um, about Louis XIV and his court. And you can see that the output is exactly what I'm asking for. Um, so the model was able to generate an assignment with the questions. Now, another uh, kind of prompt might be uh, a question asked in the form of a conversation with an agent. In this example, we are asking about Louis XIV um, in a question. So we asked, who is Louis XIV and why he is an important historical character? And we've got an answer. Another type of prompt might be a chunk of text to complete, so an incipit of a text to complete. And you can see now that we um, used a, an incipit of a text to complete as prompt, and we've got a whole paragraph to um, um, complete the, the current input. So this is basically an implicit ask for writing assistance. Now, the examples I just did are quite simple, and they want to be you know, an exhaustive demonstration of large language models capabilities. 
They just want to show you the potential of using generative AI in particular, but not limited in a context such as the educational context we have used today as an example. That's all for now. Uh, in the following lesson, we are going to explore different types of generative AI models, and we're going to cover also how to test, uh, to iterate, and to improve the performance, and compare also different models to find the most suitable one for a specific use case. Thank you.